What is going on guys? Welcome back. In this video today, we're going to learn how to work with polar coordinates in Matplotlib and how to create polar plots. So let us get right into it. All right, so we're going to learn how to work with polar coordinates and how to create polar plots using Matplotlib in Python today. Now, for those of you who don't know what polar coordinates are at all, I'm going to give you a brief explanation. It's actually quite straightforward and easy to understand. And I'm going to use a simple example to explain it to you. So let's get into my paint here. And let's say we have a coordinate system, a simple coordinate system here with the y axis and the x axis. So x down here, y up here. And now let's say I have a point P here. And I want to specify the position of this point P. Now the classic way to do it, the Cartesian way to do it is to specify the Cartesian coordinates, so x and y, and to define this point as the position on the x axis and the y axis. So for example, here, I'd, I could have something like two, here, I could have five, and then the point would be two, five, so x equals two, y equals five. These are the Cartesian coordinates. Now that is not the only way to specify the position of this point. Another way to do that is to use the radius or you could say the distance from the origin and also the angle uh, of the line or of the distance you could say. So here is the origin and if I draw a line, straight line from the origin to that point, this line here has a certain length, we can call this R or radius. And then there's also a certain angle if you want this to be a line, there's a certain angle that you have to use for that and we can call this theta. And with these two things now we can also specify the position of this point as a combination of r and theta, radius or distance and angle. And these are now the polar coordinates. This is the polar representation. This is the Cartesian representation. And we can also switch between the two, we can convert them. Uh, the formulas are not too complicated. If you have x here and you have y here, you just have to use the Pythagorean theorem to uh, see that r is actually just x squared plus y squared. And for theta, you basically just take the arctan of y divided by x. Now you don't need to understand this necessarily, this is just a conversion here. And the other way around, if you have r and theta, you can say x is equal to r times, actually not sine, r times cosine of theta, and y is equal to r times sine of theta. So this is how you switch back and forth between Cartesian and polar. This is just a little bit of theory so that you understand what we're doing here. But in this video, we're going to focus mainly on just doing the plotting, we're not going to focus on uh, the theory or the math behind it, we're just going to convert here and there, we're going to visualize these points and also certain uh, graphs, we're going to look at a butterfly graph, which is going to have a, uh, a little bit more complicated formula here. Uh, but we're going to learn how to do that using Matplotlib in this video today. So first of all, of course, if you don't have Matplotlib installed, open up your terminal and use pip to install Matplotlib like this. So either pip or pip3 install matplotlib. And once you have it installed, we can go ahead and say import math, which is a core Python package and import matplotlib.pyplot as plt. So let's say now we have a radius and an angle and we want to plot a point using polar coordinates. So let's say I have a radius 20 and I have a uh, I have an angle theta, which is just pi math.pi divided by two, which is 90 degrees, basically. And now I want to uh, I want to visualize this in a polar plot. How do I do that? Uh, actually, quite simple, I just have to define uh, a figure. So let's say PLT figure here with a figure size uh, six, six. And then I have to define an axis. So PLT dot subplot, I'm going to say one, 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 because we have uh, a one times one grid, and it's the first graph. So it's just going to be one graph. And we're going to say here, polar equals true. And then all I have to do is I have to call the scatter function on this axis. And I have to plot uh, theta and r. And then I can say plt, uh, plt show like this. Now this creates a polar plot, you can see now this doesn't look like the ordinary coordinate system because it's now, uh, yeah, basically a couple of circles here, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's uh, 360 degrees. 
And you can see that now here I have the distances, I have 2.5, 5 and so on, up until 20. And uh, or actually, this should be 20, I guess, because the point is here. So we have a distance of 20 and an angle of 90 degrees. Now, we can also do it the other way around. Let's say we have, first of all, some x and y coordinates. So let's delete all this. Let's say we have x equals 20 and y equals 30. And I just want to visualize that using uh, yeah, a general plot. So I can say plt scatter x and y, and then plt grid maybe, and plt show, and maybe just so that we have that we see everything, we can say plt x limit is from 0 to 40, and y limit as well. And then you can see that this is the point in Cartesian coordinates. So we have here the origin and we have 20, 30. That's the point. Now we can also visualize this point in a polar plot if we convert x and y to r and theta. And I already showed you how to do that. r is just going to be equal to math dot square root of x squared plus y squared. This is again just the Pythagorean theorem. And then theta is going to be equal to math dot arc 10 of y divided by x. And now I can just go ahead again, plt figure, figure size is going to be equal to 6, 6, then axis is going to be equal to plt subplot, 1, 1, 1, and then polar equals true, and then plt scatter, theta, radius, and then plt show. So we have this, we have this, and you can see that that is the same point in a polar representation because we have, again, um, we have a certain angle and we have a certain distance. And that would be the same thing if this was a coordinate system, a Cartesian coordinate system, that is just a distance, that is just the R. So that is the general principle here. Now, I want to show you an interesting example here, uh, one that I actually had to do for university some time ago. Um, I had to find the area of a butterfly graph. Uh, we're not going to do the example here, but I want to show you how you can use this for visualization, for example. So this here is the formula in polar coordinates for a butterfly, and it only works in polar coordinates. You will not get the same butterfly in Cartesian coordinates, even if you convert uh, the graph. So what we can do here is we can now say, and for this, we're going to need NumPy. So maybe you want to install NumPy as well, pip re or pip install NumPy. Um, and then of course, import it also. So import NumPy as NP. What we can do now is we can treat theta to be like the x axis and uh, the radius to be like the y axis, because usually when you have a function, you take the x values and y is defined as a function of x. And we can do the same thing now in polar coordinates to basically say using this butterfly formula, that the r value, the radius depends on where we are uh, in, in the angle. So we can make r a function of theta. And for that, of course, we need to have some theta values to work with. So we're going to say theta equals NP lin space just to generate some values here, zero and two times math dot pi. So these are basically the boundaries we generate uh, one circle full of theta points, and we want to have a 1000 points like this. So we have a 1000 points between zero and two pi, which is 360 degrees. And now we just go ahead and define uh, r as a function of that. So r is going to be equal to np exp and np sine of theta minus np cosine of four times theta, uh, actually two times np cosine, uh, four times theta, and then plus sine two times theta np pi minus np pi. And then we divide this by 24. Now I think I messed up some. I think I messed up some of the what does this belong to? Oh, I don't think we need that. Like this, then to the power of five, I think this should work. And this of course needs to be np sine. Does this make sense now? or not? 
Uh, no, of course not, because we need to close it here. There you go. Okay, this should be the formula now. So this should create a butterfly. We can go ahead and see PLT figure. And we can say again, figure size is 6.6. Six. Axis is PLT subplot. Polar true. And then we can say axis plot theta values and R values and then PLT show. And then you can see we have this butterfly here using polar coordinates. Um, and we can now go ahead and say, okay, x is just equal to r times np cosine of theta, and y is equal to r times np sine of theta. So we convert this, and then we can plot this in an ordinary coordinate system. You're going to see that this is not what you uh, would consider to be the butterfly. So you can say plt plot x and y and then you can say plt show and then you can see that this is what we get now this is also kind of a butterfly but it's a different one and i think if i remember correctly the thing that i had to do for university was i was given this here uh, with some formula um, and i had to figure out what the area was because this was all colored i needed to figure out what the area was uh, for this butterfly here. And I think I needed to integrate um, basically this this curve here, this butterfly curve. But yeah, so for polar coordinates, you have a number of different use cases. Um, I think they're quite often used in navigation. They're also used in calculus because sometimes it's, it's just convenient to work with them. But I'm sure there are many more applications that I don't know about. But this is how you work with polar coordinates and how you create polar plots using Matplotlib in Python. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.